We gotta get all these rusty and greasy 56 Chevy suspension parts looking factory new, like these ones over here on the trunk lid. It's no secret that here at Freeman's Garage, we are no stranger to extreme rust removal. I mean, the evidence of that is right here. You're, you're looking right at it. You know that old saying, the proof is in the parts? Now I know you might be saying, but Freeman, we've basically have already seen you do the same thing before. Well this time we're gonna do our extreme rust removal a little bit differently. We're gonna try something new. We'll start this job over here on our industrial workbench. This is an original workbench that I rescued out of a hundred year old abandoned wheel bearing factory in Chicago. No, no it's not but it'd be cool if it was. I'll tell you in a second here what we're gonna do differently this time, but first let's get this ball joint and spindle removed from the lower control arm. And the ball joint on the upper control arm, we're gonna leave this in place. It is the original ball joint from 1956. You can tell because of the rivets, and we're leaving it in place because it's good. There's nothing wrong with it. We're gonna reuse it. It doesn't take a whole lot to uh, Get this taken apart, and I did pre-soak it with some lube, but you can always use more. And you know I, you know I'm a stickler for a good lube, and I'm hooked on this liquid wrench currently. But I still will not let go of the WD-40 though. That's just. I mean, that's classic. No, well, I mean, and this is trusted since 1941. So they're both classic American brands. Show you what I'm looking at here. That's pretty much about it. That's on the underside. That one right there is for the bump stop, which we'll take off and reuse. Oh, you're not a half inch, you're a 9 16 I have right here in my hand. Kind of having deja vu. You know, since we've done this exact same thing before. And I was wondering if I was going to remember the size of every nut. But you know, a guy usually, you can just look at it and you know what size it is because you have, you know, you have tinkered around on things so much. Can tell what size socket you need just by looking at a nut. But then there's times where you're just kind of swimming in and out of yourself. Alright, come on bump stop. Where's my hammer? Nothing like an antique hammer to get the job done, right? And we'll put this nut back on the bump stop so that we don't lose it even though we might lose it anyways hmm. well the key is to not strip this stuff out huh, okay so you want to play hardball huh You know, with all this liquid wrench and WD-40 around here, maybe I should de-squeak this table. Well, I can't do that. That would be too easy. That would make too much sense.
victory! All right, well that wasn't so bad. That went pretty easy. Now it's time to just get uh, the grease chunks off this stuff and we're gonna drop it in vinegar overnight for rust removal. And what we're doing different this time is we're leaving all the rubber bushings in place when we drop everything in the vinegar. Now I know the last time we did this, I said that the next time we wouldn't be wasting time on experiments. Next time it'll go a lot quicker and smoother because we won't be spending any time running any scientific experiments. These rubber bushings are such a pain to get out that, hey, let's see if, if the vinegar softens them up and makes them gooey and they'll come out easier. The other reason why we're leaving these things in for the vinegar soaking is that we're kind of uh, up against one of those we're gonna lose the shop type deadlines. It's nothing serious. We could let these things soak for three nights like we did the last time and make the sandblasting that we're gonna have to do go even easier. But it's 8 p.m. right now and I really wanna have this stuff done by the end of the day tomorrow. So if these things just get one soak overnight and the sandblasting is a little bit of a pain in the butt in the morning, oh well, at least we'll, we'll get it done. I don't know about you, but I'm chomping at the bit to drop a motor in this car and get this thing back on the road, so I don't want to spend 30 years just painting the suspension parts. Speaking of suspension parts, we're missing something here. Where's our coil spring? It's hiding over here. All right, come on, I see ya. You're not getting out of this. You're getting a bath, bud. I think we can reach it if we go around the back of the Rambler here. Yep, there it is. All this stuff you see on the walls here at Freeman's Garage, it all has its own little car story. I'll have to share some of that stuff with you one of these first days. If you're interested, let me know in the comments. If nobody gives a gosh darn about any of those stories, then I'll just let it go. Okay, we'll finish degreasing this stuff so that we don't dilute our vinegar solution because we want it to last for a long time. So we can do rust removal and other parts in there. And we'll get this off here. Oh, come on. Come on, don't be difficult. There we go. Thank you for participating. All right, we're ready to dunk in the vinegar. Got all the hardware here. It doesn't matter if we mix this up because they're different sizes. The smaller stuff goes in the upper control arm and the larger stuff goes in the lower control arm. And I didn't put any tape on this area of the spindle the last time we did this. And yeah, I did this time just because, I don't know, I'd, I'd rather just not have that part touching the vinegar. That's where the bearings go, wheel bearings. And then I got the ball joint that we're going to reuse with some tape on it. Just the tape so just in case, like we'll have, we'll have this area and this area sticking up out of the vinegar. But during the night, you never know, raccoon or something might bump the tub outside.
Why am I dropping that down there? I can just put it all in the gold pan screen. Duh. I think that'll do her. Good night, guys. All right, that's done. It's about 9 p.m. right now. I don't want to fire up the air compressor for the blast cabinet at 5 a.m. So we'll have to wait till about eh, 7 a.m. So looks like these parts are gonna get about a, a 10 hour soak and we'll hit it hard in the morning. Good morning. Let's check on our parts. I'm curious to find out if the rubber bushings are a liquid or a solid. Looks like our 30 million year old fossil held the lid down overnight. All right, that smells like 500 million bottles of ketchup. Very vinegary. We got a lot of water coming out of the air hose. We need to get under here and drain the water out of the tank. The rubber bushings appear to be unchanged. But we'll find out for sure when we start drilling into them. Alright, let's get this stuff here blasted and a coat of primer on everything so it doesn't rust and while we're doing that all this stuff will just be soaking longer while it waits its turn okay. took a couple minutes to put some fresh tape on areas that i do not want to media blast now let's get everything in here and finally get started Boy, that was brutal. Normally I love sandblasting, but gotta tell you, that took me a couple of hours. It was kind of grueling. 10 hours in the vinegar just wasn't quite enough. It really helped, but it just really could use another night or two. So we might as well just leave the lower control arm and the coil spring out there to soak as long as possible. Well, we get the bushings out of this and get a coat of primer on both pieces. I gotta tell you, I'm actually regretting going about things this way. We should have just took the bushings out first. I mean, I knew, I knew better. The vinegar is amazing at removing rust, but paint and grease, not so much. Seems to not really do a whole lot for petroleum or oil-based products. Kind of feel like we're working backwards a little bit. Not too much. Need a new blade. This one is dull as dishwater. There we go. Now it's sharp as a whip. Sharp as a, a razor. See if we can work these things out of here. You know, I'm getting really tired of this table. 
Get really tired of it. Now we got things starting to come apart. Let's give these bushings a little bit of a drilling just to loosen things up more, make it easier on us. This drill bit is... It's bent. How did I bend this? Both bushings have been drilled, that should help. And we'll also do some liquid wrench. I don't want to go crazy on it. The more oil that we put on this control arm, okay, I just sprayed it everywhere. The more we put on here, the more we're gonna to have to clean off before we spray primer on it, so. Yep. Well, we shifted things that way. So I think that'll help. I think we're on the right track. Let's keep at it. This rubber sure likes to hang on, doesn't it? Does not want to come out. Yeah, this is gonna need a real good degreasing now. I knew that was gonna happen. You know, I do things, a lot of things that probably make you wonder, why in the world would he, why would he do that? Well, I know better. I just like to try things and see what happens. All right, let's get this side out. I've been picking away at the rubber on this side for probably 10 minutes. And she's finally coming. Or I thought she was. Come on. There we go. Come on out. I don't want to hurt you. I just want to talk to you. I picked all that rubber out of there. Can you believe that? Can you believe that someone would do that? That's not the easiest or most efficient way to get the job done. But now we know that it can be done that way. I'm gonna wash my hands and decrease this upper control arm and actually throw it back in the blast cabinet to clean up uh, the side where the rubber was going backwards, wasting some time, but it's all right. I mean, we're in Freeman's garage. We're working on Tri-5 Chevy stuff. We're having fun. We just ran out of stuff to spray these parts off with before we paint them. So I dug up this full can of brake cleaner that I bought brand new, dropped it, and snapped the top off. And then I'm gonna take a random cap or nozzle, whichever you prefer, from a different can, and I'm gonna see if this will work. It's either gonna spray out the straw or it's gonna spray into my eyes. Both! That was a close one. We almost had to shut her down and go to the parts store. Let's get fired up and get this project done. Cue the royalty-free track.
All right, these are looking great with a coat of primer on them. And of course, that's what happens from time to time here in Freeman's garage. One thing leads to another, the day goes by and we're painting in the dark. Gee, isn't it funny how time slips away? All right, so we just got that big lower control arm and that coil spring left to do. And let's hope that they don't give us the same kind of trouble that the other parts did or we're gonna be out here all night. Well, actually being in, being in your garage all night, that's not a bad thing. And anyways, Waylon Jennings said, every night begins a new day. This coil spring came out of the vinegar without all that slimy black stuff on it like the last one did. I don't know what it did to my hand though. <laughs> Maybe I should wash that off. All right, this lower control arm is not done, but I'm gonna stop blasting on it for right now. There's not a whole lot left, but I wanna get the rubber bushings out of here, and then we'll throw it back in the cabinet and finish her up. Well, I am pleased to announce that these bushings came out in record time. A lot easier and a lot cleaner than on the other control arm. But it's so late now that it's almost tomorrow and I'm sure the good people of the world are in their beds sleeping tight right now. So even though I could, I'm not gonna fire the blast cabinet and the air compressor back up again. You can hear that thing a mile away. And I just, have respect for folks, even if they don't know and don't care. Once again, I'll see you in the morning. Now that all that work's done, in a future video very soon here, we're gonna be back up at the front, putting everything back together. Thanks for watching Freeman's Garage. You're the reason why I make these videos. You are the wind beneath my wings.